Hello everybody to Getting APIs to Work. Today we talk about API products, what they are, why it's important to think about them and how they can deliver value to customers. As so often, I have with me Mike Amundsen. Hey Mike, how are you doing? Hey, good to see you. Yeah, thanks for being here again. And um, thanks for chatting about that topic. I think we both talk about API products quite a bit. It's kind of a term that people have picked up on. So if, if you had to give a one sentence definition of what is an API product before we dive a little deeper, what, what would your definition look like? One sentence. Um, it's something that's <laughs> created, developed, and packaged as like a unit. As a, I think the dictionary says something like as a commodity or as an item, right? Uh, it's something that's intentionally designed and built, I would say. I like that intentionally. So there is intention behind the API. The API is not just some side product that happens to fall out of some code generation tool, but it's really yep. something that was created with intentionality. I think that's a big difference. So, okay, good. Now you already mentioned that, and I think it, it does make sense to dive into this at least a little bit. So if we just talk about what a product is, and you mentioned that already, there's a certain definition of product. So, and it might might feel like it's a little um, easy to talk about just products, but what is what are the defining factors of products for you? Well, to, okay, for me, when when I talk about this, uh, and and I've heard other people talk about it this way too, uh, products have consumers, they have an audience, they have a customer. You're solving someone else's problem. A big part of this is I'm not solving my problem. I'm solving the consumer's problem. They're trying to compute net present value or manage customers or figure out what orders are still due. So there's that's part of the intentionalities. I'm solving somebody else's problem. And then I think another big part of it is it needs to be uh, usable. In my estimation, a product is something that's used by more than one consumer or one audience. It has some kind of, you know, landscape. We talk about landscapes. There's some kind of space where it plays. So. It's, a, it's an intentionally designed product to solve a, a consumer's problem, hopefully more than one consumer. And I think that is really important, right? Because when you started talking, you talked about it solves a problem. I was thinking of, yes, but. And I think that but part is what you addressed afterwards, right? That I think a product, for me also, one important part about a product is that it addresses a market, right? It's not just a solution for somebody specifically for exactly their problem. It's you have an idea of, oh, what I'm building here is useful for more than one consumer, right? And therefore I turn it into a product and I manage it as a product so that it can provide value to all of the market participants or whatever you call them. And I think that part really is something where you see a lot of Pre-API things are more focused, I think, on solving a specific problem and not so much addressing a market, so to speak. And I, I think that for me is always where APIs like introduce this interesting twist and also change the way how you think about IT and IT architecture a little bit. So let me let me dig into that a little bit because because you're saying something I think that isn't readily isn't always talked about. So you really see APIs as a kind of a one-to-many, it's by default, it's a sort of a one-to-many experience, right? There are many consumers, that's what makes it a, an API? Is that kind of the way you're thinking? In, in my mind, I think that is something, at least when I explain, you know, a lot of organizations are saying, okay, explain to us why should we even consider APIs? And my point explaining to them sometimes goes along the lines of, okay, you can, you can connect systems in many different ways, and in more, let's say, traditional integration ways, all of these connections that you would make from run system consumers would be integra individual integration. And you can make all of these, but it's an individual effort every single time, and it, it doesn't really scale that wonderfully. And with APIs, to me, the big difference is instead of designing N one-to-one -one connections, you're actually kind of designing a one-to-N connection, and you're done, right? That, mission accomplished. So, and, and I think that's also something where, because we have to connect more and more things, I think the, the advantages of the one approach over the other become more and more obvious it's because the difference yeah. between those two approaches becomes more and more visible. 
Yeah, I think I think you touched on another one, which I've talked about, which is this idea of the APIs help you scale by making it easier to do that one to n kind of implementation rather than the one to one implementation, sort of a one off or custom build everything, because that's often what what I run into IT shops doing. They custom build their solution and then they complain that it's not uh, usable, it's not reusable. Right. And in fact, they go into great lengths to design it, you know, just right for this one particular problem. They're really mm -hmm. creating a solution. Right. I think we've used that phrase before. Right. Yeah, they're solving this one problem. And I think that's the other thing with APIs. I think a, like buying into APIs also, I think, needs a little bit of vision saying, yes, I could also connect those three things one to one. And the effort may even be a little bit smaller because right. I have a tool that does that for me and I don't have to design an API and stuff, right? But then if you, instead of the three connections, you want to make five or 10 or 20, then suddenly I think the, the balance tips and it becomes much more economical to invest a little bit more in the beginning and then say, okay, but now anybody who needs that capability, this product, they can just consume it, right? There's nothing to be done. They just click subscribe in your API marketplace and they're done. But I think this takes a little bit of really understanding the potential and right. not just saying, how much does it cost to do this one thing that I have in front of me here, here right now? That, yeah, that's so experience. I, 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 I think the sort of, the, we've used the phrase before, uh, you know, product value or designing in value for customers, that designing value that act of creating value is the act of creating something that's one to n right it's not just creating yes. something that solves a problem and that's the intentionality i think and that's a different mindset i think and i yeah. think that also makes it so hard sometimes right because of course you can also create apis that are technically apis but that are only useful for exactly one consumer and then in technical terms, you have created an API, but the way I frame it, not everybody likes to hear it, right? But then I usually say, well, then it's just integration. Just, Why do you even bother? Just just, yeah, yeah, it's just integration. Like you didn't, you didn't really do anything different. You just right. used a little different technology in the middle, right? But, but I think, like you said, the intentionality, the mindset of saying, if I solve a problem, the way I, I'm trying to solve it is to address a market of potential consumers who want to have that problem solved. And that's the way how I go about it. And the larger the organization, right, that's also important, I think, the larger the organization, the bigger the chance is that there is more than one potential consumer, right? That Because this right. network effect means, right, you'll have more and more things you can connect and more and more people want to connect things. And the more you have, that you can reasonably understand and connect, the more this will actually happen. Yeah. So, so when I, you, I'm wondering, when, when you walk into organizations and you ask them about mm -hmm. like, what APIs do you have and how do you use them right now? Like, what's your experience? What, what do you see? Yeah, um, uh, I, I very often do that. I say, well, they say, we'd like some, you know, some analysis of our APIs or some advice. And I say, well, one of the first things I ask is, well, how many? Like, do you even know where they all are? That sometimes is a challenge. Um, I sometimes ask uh, if they're actually being used. So that's another challenge. But At one all, of the other yes. Ones, yeah, all. is anybody using them? But then the next challenge is, is are, they, are they, as we just talked about here, are they a one-to-one -one or are they a one-to-many? Like how many of your APIs are actually being used by more than one team? How many, that's a product to me. So now I've got, 10 teams that are dependent on this one API. That looks like you might have a product on your hands. That means, that's why I talked earlier about uh, design and package and documentation and support. Now you have a product, right? But if everything is just one off, if all of the listings, if it's sort of like the, I guess it's the reverse of the long tail or something, like if all of them are just one off. <laughs> the short tail know, of APIs. Yeah, the yes. short tail of APIs, <laughs> then all of a sudden I'm kind of concerned. Does, uh, does that yeah. make sense? I mean, I how about you? No, no, I love that. I think that that's definitely something I will use from now on. You know, it's like, oh, here's another short tail of APIs, right? Where half of your APIs have exactly one consumer. One, yeah. And that is not a good pattern. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, 
it, it works, right, on a technical level. But I think what you can tell if you see this pattern, right, is that the, the product mindset, the, the idea of how APIs can help you to reuse things, to build new things faster by building on existing things, and then all the wonderful things that we always talk about when you talk about APIs, right, that the potential for this to happen is much lower if very clearly you are currently having an environment where most of the APIs are not products. They're yeah. just, yeah. just integration. <laughs> just integration. That's right. I'll keep, I'll keep saying that. <laughs> just integration, short tail of APIs. There you go. See, two, two nice little buzzwords. Um, so, so if you go in there and you see the short tail of APIs in front of you, what's your typical go-to move? How do you, like, what's your reaction to that? Well, uh, usually the reaction is people kind of confess, you know, it turns out we have several of these APIs that are very similar, <laughs> uh, but because they were originally done as a, just an integration, they're, they're not configurable or they're mo not modifiable or, or these other things, which are other features of a product, right? So it turns out often you can kind of corral at least a collection of them. And you may not be able to reduce, you may find like five or 10 or maybe even 20 that are similar across a large organization. You may not be able to reduce those down to one, but maybe you can use some configuration and modification and, and evolvability features and get those to maybe two or three generalized products uh, that could be very powerful. And now they scale much better than trying to maintain 20. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You just triggered this process in my mind by saying two or three. What's what's this guy's name who wrote Blink and, you know, like all these other books? Gladwell? You remember? Gladwell, Gladwell, Malcolm yes. Gladwell? Yeah. Simon, yeah. Mal Malcolm Gladwell, exactly. So he yeah. has this w wonderful, wonderful story, right, where he discovered in order to create tomato sauces that are good, you need two, right? You cannot create one tomato sauce that makes everybody happy, <laughs> but you need chunky and non-chunky okay. sauce. Okay, but you can something. make pretty much everybody happy with those two sauces, ah. right? And, and like you say, maybe it's the same for APIs, right? If you have these 20 APIs, you could say, well, there is a certain variation to it. And if we just created one, it really wouldn't make anybody very happy. But if we create two, then everybody is pretty much happy. Right. And, and that's right. so that's actually an interesting design problem. Right. To say, like, in that solution space that you see of these 20 things, how can you group those into two things you can then productize? But I think that's actually a topic we should leave for another chat, because yeah. that, I think, becomes a little bit more sophisticated. It, it <laughs> does. I, I like that yeah. direction very much. Ch yeah. Chunky APIs. And okay. <laughs> now we have three takeaways, right? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that, All right. that last one maybe is not not our biggest one, but uh, anyway, it's a nice detour. Um, okay, so to wrap it up, so API products. I think if if we come back to this idea, what is an API product? I think what we settled on is to say it's mostly the thought process behind it, right? The way it's conceived, the way it's designed, the way it's produced, the way it's deployed, the way it's provided. So everything that turns it into something that is valuable for more than one person and it's easily yeah. consumable. Is that, yeah. would you agree to yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. That, that's the design intention. That's the design thinking. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's mm -hmm. product design. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Okay. So I guess in that case, we have successfully answered the question, what is an API product? And I, I will definitely, the short tail will stay with me. I think I will see many more short tails in my, <laughs> in, in my right. consulting <laughs> gigs. But um, yeah, it's interesting. And it, I think it also easily demonstrates, you know, how you can make progress from those scenarios to maybe yeah. other ones. Yeah. Okay, Mike, thank you so much for joining. Once again, it's a lot of fun to talk with you to discuss everything and anything API, um, in particular, when we end up with discussing tomato sauce, that, yeah, <laughs> that was a I first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Unexpected. Yeah, unexpected. That's very true. Yeah. That was just me. Uh, but thanks again for joining. Thanks everybody for listening. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And um, if you're interested in API topics, consider subscribing. Uh, I publish new API content pretty much 
every week. So thanks a lot once again and have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.